Jesus freak here. Now I've had to clarify my stance on the Bible translation issue because I've had some people thinking I was King James only. And I get it. I promote the KJV. I seldom review anything but the KJV, and I almost never use anything but the KJV in my videos. So I get it. You, you don't see me using other translations. You certainly don't see me encouraging people to use those translations. So it's understandable that people get the impression that I'm King James only. The thing is, a lot of King James only types go further than and just, oh, I, I only use the KJV. And they'll say, you know, oh, they believe that at least in English, and some people go further and say in any language, the King James Version alone is the Bible alone. Some go so far as to say that the King James Version itself is Theopneustos, is inspired by God. You start getting into stuff like that, you know, you, you're off the rails. Now, I understand a lot of the issues with modern... I agree with a lot of complaints that King James only types have about modern versions. There are translation issues with the new King James version. There are issues with using such a radically different Vorlage than the King James is based on. I get that. I don't disagree with that either. When I translated the New Testament 10, 15 years ago, although the text type I used wasn't exactly the same as the King James, for one, it didn't have the comma Johannium, and for one, it had, had a few pretty significant differences in the books of Jude and Revelation. It was based on the same basic stuff. You know, it was based on the Textus Receptus mixed with the Vulgate. The same as the King James. And of course, you don't see me recommending my translation anywhere near on the same level as the King James. I recommend it at best as a supplement. And that's basically my stance with other translations. Although, you ask me what I think other translations, what I prefer as a translation, I'd say if it weren't for the textual issues in the New Testament and some of the iconoclastic renderings in the Old, I would prefer the RSV. And there are actually places I prefer the NRSV, apart from the fact I don't agree with their translation style because they went off in the direction of the NIV. Now, I gladly spearhead a new translation, a proper translation. done by a group of people working under a set of rules. <laughs> now, I want to emphasize those reasons I stick to the KJV despite preferences I might have for the RSV. The first is I'm trying to set an example and with what I've repeatedly said, that I believe the KJV should remain the standard in the church. That's different from saying it should be the standard, period. 
saying it should be the standard of the church, but the saying it should be the standard in the church and not using it in my videos would be hypocritical. The second is, of course, the copyright issue. I can use a verse or two here or there of fair use. Most translations will allow me to use more through a special or exception to copyright that they give on the copyright page. For example, I believe the um, NASB does this. But I run into problems with that. For example, these licenses say you can't use a whole book of the Bible. One of the readings in my lectionary is the entire epistle to Philemon. So even if you're just basing, you know, the copyright exemption on a video for video basis. I'm going to run afoul of it. I operate in the U.S. under U.S. laws. I understand in the U.K. there's a patent that protects the King James. They have the same, you know, well, 500 verse slash half a book restriction that modern versions have. I know this. But I'm operating in the U.S. So I'm operating under American law. YouTube is U.S. YouTube is operating under American law as well. So, honestly, I don't care if things are more restricted in the UK. But where I am, if I'm using a translation that for me has no restrictions, and it's a translation that is easy to procure. And it's a translation that's well accepted. I don't need to be relying on these other translations. This is strictly pragmatic. I actually do prefer the language of the King James, although I understand, you know, it has its issues. There are places where the King James Version is clear as mud because translators didn't really know what they were doing, which, I mean, no one really knew what they were doing at that point a lot about how the language works has been figured out since then. Of course, you run into the opposite problem, you know, people are... You know, every, one, every once in a while someone comes up with some weird, funky hypothesis. And everyone's following it for a few decades, and then they realize it's bunk. You'll find this with, like, Ezekiel... 38.2 where for about 50 years every translation said the prince of Rosh, Meshach and Tubal and they're starting to go back to the reading the King James had the chief priests of Meshach and Tubal this is because of the debunked hypothesis that was mainly pushed by like people like, like C.I. Schofeld
but it infected the NASB for several revisions. It infected the NA NKJV. A lot of translations. And you'll find that nowadays a lot of translations are realizing there are things that they thought they got right, that the King James got right, and they got wrong. Like I said, I understand there's some obscurity, there's some issues, whatever. And that's why I'm okay with secondary versions to a point. Now my point is if translations to paraphrastic, well, that's what it is. It's paraphrastic. And you also got to be careful. Every once in a while you'll have someone saying, oh, I got special revelation from an angel or from God. And I rewrote the Bible accordingly. In the 1800s, in the 19th century, you had um, Joseph Smith. In the 20th century, you had the Watchtower Bible, tra uh, Bible and Tract Society. And now you got some guy named Brian Simmons. And it's always the same thing. Brian Simmons' story about meeting an angel named Passion and getting special revelation from God sounds an awful lot like Joseph Smith. The Passion translation. People got to realize that's not a translation. Those words are coming from the pen of Brian Simmons. Those are not a translation. It's a rewrite. He's like, the Bible isn't good enough, I can do better kind of attitude. You know, that, that has to be thrown completely out. That's far worse than the issue of paraphrastic translations like the CSB or whatever, or even going further with the NLT and TEV, CEV, and the message. Which, I mean, I still don't recommend those. My problems... You know, I have different problems with different translations. Most of them are textual issues. Sometimes I think the problem is either going too uh, too loose or they don't know whether they want to be updates to the King James that go their own way. I don't have issues in principle with other translations apart from what I said, you know, it's good to have a standard. That way, you know, there's no confusion. God's not the author of confusion. If everyone's on the same page in church, you know, was reading the same words, you're not going to have a lot of confusion. That's my main stance. I felt I needed to clarify that. Anyway, Jesus freak out.